So in this podcast, I will show how to uh, uh, use Jape to do box proofs. Uh, so I will start off, uh, fire off up uh, Jape. Here we are. And now I have to load the right file into Jape. Jape is actually can do much more than a uh, box proof. I'm not quite sure how developed it is, but it's supposed to be able to do a lot more than box proofs. Uh, but but, uh, but it's important we load the right file into, into Jape, because otherwise it either crash or something else, and that is not good. So here we are. This is a panel. You notice there are three different panels. One is called conjecture. This means that these are statements we can actually prove from what we have learned or from, from by use of box proofs. Uh, you will, however, notice that in the bottom of the panel you see some sort of gibberish or something looking quite different from the upper part. But these are this is called predicate logic, while the part we have up here is, is propositional logic. So I will later in the course give you talk a little bit about predicate logic, even though it's not uh, exam material. But so in this course we are mainly doing uh, propositional logic. Then you have another panel called classical conjectures. These are uh, it's very similar to to uh, other uh, what to call it the general uh, conjectures, but these ones can only be is, uh, these propositions are only valid for certain types of logics of what is called classical logic. So I'll come back to that also. Uh, but at the moment you would not be able to do this in J because we need some rules we have not talked about. Finally, we have invalid conjectures. These are statements that simply are not true. They are simply not tautologies, so they are not valid in general. It's not in general valid that you from a, a premise you have here to the left can derive this statement you have to the right. However, uh, again, JAPE have a very interesting uh, possibility of, of doing what is called Kripke counter model, which is quite uh, complicated stuff and quite involved. It's something I will talk about in the end of the course, but it's not exam material. So I will do a podcast where I explain, or maybe also in a lecture, I will explain a bit about the Kripke counter models. These are ways to show that things cannot be proved by box proofs. Now let's do a conjectures, do a conjecture to show how it works. So let me start with this one we have here. Uh, the symbol you have written here means uh, uh, derive or proofs or or it's, it's not a, it, it works a bit like an implication but what the meaning of it is that is from the material or the information we have to the left derive what is on the right side so in this case the task is to from the premise here derive this conclusion and I will do it in, just to illustrate uh, how JAPE works I, will, works, I will do it in two different ways. I will do it like a forward approach. So we have this premise, I go forward, and, uh, well, from E and this other stuff here in the bracket, I conclude E. I can take the same line and go forward and conclude F and G. Now, if I did it by hand, I would naturally put E, sorry, F and G here. But now when I do it by JAPE, you already notice something different from by doing it by hand. You notice that it squeezed it in between the line we had before and the premise. But we have we have justified these lines. The three dots you see here means that uh, the gap from this step to this step has to be filled in somehow. We have our target is now to from the information we have here on the top, in the first three lines, we have to derive the, this target we have on the bottom. So what do we know? We know E, we know F and G. Okay, from F and G, we can uh, it's good to break it down and we can do a forward and elimination. So we got the F. Again, it, it has this squeeze it in between the line we had before and this one and I put forward and I do a uh, and invasive serving right so up to this point we have broken down the original premise into uh, 
shorter statements. So we have, we have what we have done is that we have taken the premise we have up here, and then we have now derived g, we have derived f, and we have derived e. And from these we want to eventually to derive this thing. Now I think because I will do everything forward, uh, I have to be a bit careful. Uh, maybe it's a bit too risky to do it forward because I have to make sure. Let me see. It's just an experiment. Let me try to do e and f and forward and introduction. Sorry, yes, and introduction. No, it did not like that. Let me just try. Oops, it didn't like that either, so I'll do an undo. I will play around with it a bit like you also should play around with it, because it's not... Uh, let me see, I'm curious now. We want to do E and F. That's what, what I, If I had did it on a piece of paper, I will just write E and F here. So let's do that, and I right-click on F. Now I have highlighted these two, and let's do a forward and intro. Oh, and now it gives me the choice here to choose which one I cho choose. We want E and F, so we want A. So we got that. Now, uh, what about taking... I'll try in this proof to do everything forward. So what about this one? Oh, sorry. You see again. Uh, you have to if you don't right click it, jump away. So we now I right click on, on one of them. So we have these two, and I do a forward and intro. Now it gives me a choice. Which one do I mean? And you notice here it actually asks the questions without putting brackets. That's because there is a convention that if you have a what this really means e and f and g, it really means. E and F brackets and G. So I, I will say A, and then it's doing it. Uh, in this course, by the way, I often put, uh, even in this case, you see J didn't put the brackets, because by convention, if you have a, an AND with three, the bracket is always put to the left. But that kind of burdened the memory a bit. So I, I mean, I, normally I will always put the bracket, so you are not supposed to necessarily to. I mean, you see a question at least, I always put the brackets so, so it's explicitly made explicit how to interpret the formula. But this is a complete proof uh, of the statement. You can see that uh, we have here to the right the annotation of the proof, uh, and to the left the actual box proof is only this part here inside here. That's a box proof and what everything else is annotation. Now let me do the same in a slightly different way. So this time I'll try to start with a, a backwards and intro. So we get that. Now let me go forward. I think as I, 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 I had I had I think if you just try to go backwards here, tape somehow don't like it. Uh, because I would maybe we could try to derive an e here and an f here, but let's let's try to go now go forward like before, forward and do an and elimination, preserving the left. We can go forward, preserving the right, and we have this. And let's go forward, preserving the right. And now we are, let's see, we can go forward preserving the left. And then this one, we can now go backwards and into. And now we have the complete proof like before. So I just wanted to show that you can, you don't necessarily have to do an end deviation forward, you can also do some of the step backwards. Now let's do, uh, let me see. Now I want to do some box, some, some of the ones with implication. So I do a new, this one I will uh, do a kind of fun type of implication that illustrate the AND game quite well. So the implication game quite, quite well. Mm. 
Okay, so let's try to. Uh, this is a, a new formula, and I want to prove this in JAPE. So the task is to derive this. So we have to, in some sense, you can say we have to, to justify that line or prove this line is valid. It turns out it's its tautology. It's actually quite useful to think about why it's a tautology. So I think I will, I will explain that here. Uh, we can, of course, do the truth table. And then that will be that will show it come out as tautology, but I can also we can also explain why it must always evaluate to true this whole thing. And the explanation is that suppose it somehow was possible to make this thing false. If you could make this thing false, how would that be possible? I want to show it we cannot make it false. So what the way I argue is that I say I, I will try to see if we can make it fall, false and then see this is not possible. The only way this formula could become false by use of truth table is that if A is true and this thing is false. Remember false implies everything. So the only way by truth table this one evaluate to false is A is true and this is false. But how can this thing be false? Well the only way this can be false is B is true and this thing here is false. But how can C implies A be false the only possibility is that C is true and A is false. But that's a problem because we started off just explaining that A had to be true. And now we co conclude that A has to be false. So the only way to make this whole thing false is that A is true and A is also false. That's not possible. That's a, a kind of, if you want, a, a, an, an argument that this must be a tautology. But here we are doing it formally by box proof. So we go backwards, do an AND uh, implication introduction, simply draw a box on top of the implication and pull up the A, and this becomes a target. Repeat, we do a implication introduction, and this again is the automatic thing to do when you, when you want to justify an implication, is to do an uh, implication introduction, and you can see now the proof is actually uh, complete, and it's also annotated. Let's do another one. Uh, let's go back and do some of the other ones. Uh, let actually let me do some of the. Uh, let me invent some another one here. What about this one? Let me put a bracket around this. I always like to put more brackets than uh, so, so uh, put enough bracket that there's absolutely no ambiguity about how to interpret the formula. I claim that this thing is a tautology, and we can actually prove it by box proof. So let's prove it. Uh, the first step is more or less automatic because it's, we have to justify an implication, and so we go backwards and do a Implication introduction. Oh, I think the fonts are font sizes are not so good. What do I do here? Formula font size. Let's shift to this. Let's also shift to this. Okay. So this is automatic thing. We, so now we, if we did it. On a piece of paper or by hand, we will simply draw a box on top here uh, and put the A on top and put the B implies C here at the bottom. Let's now do it by JAPE. Okay, that's what JAPEs do. And we'll do the same, draw another box. 
Okay. But this is a very important step we had now, because it turns out that uh, we now need another implication rule. If you actually look at it, you can see JAPE have these three dots. That means that everything else has been justified and can be justified. These are assumptions, what we have in the top of the box, and what we have in the uh, elsewhere have, have to be justified. But that C, the question is, how can we get, how can we justify the C? What do we know? Well, this is what we know. We're inside this box, so we, we know these lines. We have to justify. See? Uh, now look at the first line. That's where we somehow need to get our C from. Because, I mean, that's the only line that actually speak about C. The only line that says anything about C. So now we are applying something you can say wishful thinking. If we could somehow here new A implies B at this stage, then we would be done. Because then we would have A implies B, and combining that with line 1, we would get the C. So, what I do in Jape is I, I highlight this one, and I highlight this one, and then I hope Jape can work it out. I do a, it's called now implication elimination. And you see what Jape did? Jape worked out that indeed, in order to make an elimination from that line, and get that we need to prove this. Now the rest is straightforward again on piece of paper and also on J. We go backwards and do an implication introduction. And now as, as it happens, lo and behold, the full we have the full proofs here. Full proof.